Hi, my name is Joy Chinamuzi and I am a writer and a filmmaker. And welcome to Book Lovers. <laughs> um, reading is an escape for me. It has been for the longest time. Growing up, um, we would read on Saturdays as a family. So we'd sit and then we each read. So everyone picks up a book to read. And I cannot quite remember how old I was when that was happening, but I know that one of my most um fondest <laughs> I am um um one of my favorite memories was going to the National Library. So my my dad used to work somewhere in Upper Hill and then he would take me to the National Library on Saturdays as well. So after coming from the National Library, I think membership was a hundred shillings, I can't quite remember. So it was really exciting to walk in there. And then there's a children's section. I don't know if it's still there, but there was a children's section. So we walk in there and then we go to a shelf. And there's all colors of books to pick from. And some had illustrations, some didn't. And I enjoyed just going in there and getting to have a choice to pick out a book. I don't think it was really the thrill of reading that was driving me, but more of the thrill of choice. Um, and the promise that I would come back to town on Saturday and then get to pick another book. So it stopped. Reading was an escape and it also became a part of me. So it became, I think, the best part of me. So if I would share my current read with someone, um, I would be sharing an intimate bit of me. If, if I sit with someone and talk about it, then it is being quite intimate with this person. So reading to me is synonymous to... This is an exaggeration, but it is synonymous to life. <laughs> um, so my current read is this, Dust. And I have not started reading it yet. <laughs> so I've been carrying this book around for two days now. And I keep saying I want to start it. Um, why? Because first of all, it's a very, it has a very interesting illustration and a very interesting cover. And also because I would want to read this book. So I would not pick up a book that I do not intend on reading. So this is my current read that I have not read yet. And um, it is about... <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to read the back. In contemporary Nairobi, a young man... Uh, in contemporary Nairobi, a young man named Moses Odidi Oganda bleeds to death in the streets, murdered by the police. As his lifeblood, full of memories, colors, and songs, pours into the, into the dust, the stories that tumble forth reveal the violent upheaval of Kenya's own life, reaching from the Mau Mau uprisings of the um, 1950s to the murky interfaces of, of modern day corruption. Odidi's Odidi, Odidi, grief stricken family journeys home to what Ogiek, the crumbling coral colored house far out in the Kenyan drylands. Fifty years ago, Worth of Geek was built by a British colonial officer whose name they no longer dare to speak. The mystery of his disappearance is woven together with the secrets, desires, and shadows within the decaying de desert house. In the parched landscape where the Ogandas live, stories are of paramount importance. And this is a story about stories, about how myths came to pass, history is written, and, war and how war stains us forever. With strength, empathy, and grace, dust brings together the shards of a family's and nation's shared and hidden history, which gradually come clear and are exorcised. Written in prose of arresting power, Yvonne Adiambo's of War's de debut um, novel is a stunningly original work of art. Um, so this was written before, so December 12th, 
2013 will mark the 50th anniversary of Kenya's independence. And I think that is the same date um, of this, when this book was published. So I am excited to start reading it. When will I start reading it? I have no idea, but I will read it. I have, my, my favorite genre is fiction, but I have not, um, I haven't stuck to fiction all through, but it really is my favorite um, genre. I have tried reading long uh, prose of poem and um, that didn't go so well. I have read very interesting biographies and autobiographies and those ones, some of them are very interesting. Um, I like fiction that has a touch of history in it. So um, at some point, I think in, in high school, I picked up uh, Dan Brown's novel. But the reason why I did that is because everyone was talking about the Da Vinci Code and why Christians should not read or watch the Da Vinci Code. And so I did. I'm Christian, though. But I did. Um, maybe because people said not to do it. And I found out that it's actually quite interesting. If you read that book as a work of fiction, as Dan Brown says, read my work as a work of fiction, then it's amazing. It's an amazing read. Um, so later on in university, I read all his books because his writing is amazing. Um, so of course, my, my reading has grown with time i i think it, in primary i think class three i stole someone's book to the sweet valley sweet valley not high before high sweet valley twins to sweet valley twins and then in the school library there happened to be sweet valley twins series so i'd go there and read and read and read and read and you know how i said reading was an escape for me so um i i was not very um I I, can't, I was unable to make friends as easily as other people do because um, I, now I know it is called social anxiety. But um, so I would go to the library over break time because then no one cares, it's just you and the book. So you take your book, you hide that. So I found Sweet Valley Twins and then I got into Sweet Valley Highs. And then Sweet Valley Highs started becoming Kidogo erotic. And at class, I think class five or class six, I that was too much. So I picked up the Hardy Boys. Um, like, this I think Secret Seven, yeah, Secret Seven. Yeah, those goosebumps. I read them, and then got into high school, and then meals and wounds happened. <laughs> and um, I, in form two, I held. Chinua Achebe's book, Things Fall Apart. And that was beautiful. I felt like Chinua Achebe was telling me a story. I felt like he was an an old man. Okay, no. I felt like he was my grandfather sitting and telling me a story about people I've never known. But somehow, as he told me this story, I knew these people and their lives, and I could see it, and I could feel it. And that was my first African novel. And so it goes without saying that Chinu Achebe is my favorite author. Um, if I could go back in time and um, get to meet one person, it would be Chinu Achebe. And probably I'd make him mentor me and make him teach me how to write like he does probably but or maybe i just look at him and just admire him <laughs> um i think shino achebe is a is an amazing author um in university i picked up um there was a country his book there was a country so after reading there was a country that led me to read about the history of the biafran war and read about Nigeria. And I wouldn't say that I absolutely understand the nation, but it gave me a scope of of the country and 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 what lies um, behind it. And I felt like I know Nigeria 
from a book. So Chinua Achebe is my favorite author. And then comes Margaret Atwood because I read um I read a book written uh, called The Edible Woman and oh, my blood. The Edible Woman is it's it's tiny, it's not big, but the way it is written, it is amazing. Um, and then later on with, with the Me Too movement, and I read her voice in the Me Too movement, and I loved her some more. Um, then my other, yeah, my other favorite book is The Little Prince. I wish I had read The Little Prince as a child and then read it in high school and then read it in university and then read it now because I feel like it is a book that transcends age. It is very ageless and so smooth and beautiful and it's 69 pages and it has illustration. Um, I remember we read it in my literature class and we had a moment of interaction and I I kept saying, is this really a children's book? Because the interest is, the intro is an apology um, from the author. He's, he's asking for forgiveness from children because he is writing to his friend who is an adult, but the adult thinks like a child. So he's asking for patience from the children to understand that this adult is not like every other adult. This adult is, and this adult understands children. And I am still captured by that book because it reminds me of, it reminds me to be a child, to explore my inner child, to explore my sense of wonder. So I read when I want to. I read, I see books and I want to read them. So I pick them up. I buy books. But I will not read because I have to. I will read because I want to. I will read because it is good to read. I mean, of course, that is when it's not um, part of the syllabus. Then you have to read when you should read the book. But I read books because it is good for my soul. <laughs> um, reading is not reading is not a chore and should not be made into a chore. In fact. I have friends who did not read, did not enjoy reading up until they stumbled across audiobooks, which is fine because sometimes I listen to audiobooks and they they are quite soothing. I there's a book called The Psychology, sorry, The Wisdom of the Psychopath. And I did not find that in hard copy. That was in soft copy and it was in audio form. So which books would I prefer? Um, what type of books would I prefer? Would I prefer audio books, soft copies, or hard copies? I prefer hard copies because then I will remember to read my book as I should. But no, I do not do so well with soft copies. I have tried and I have failed miserably. I am now exploring um, audio books and then combining that with paperbacks. And I am having a thrill. Um, I haven't read in... Last year, I didn't quite read much. But then, I have no idea. Why. Probably mental space. But then towards the end of last year, I read so many books at a go. And it was amazing. It was very refreshing to get in touch with my, with my side that enjoys books. So, I would recommend that do not think of reading as a chore because if you think of reading as a chore then it is quite boring it is quite tedious but if you think of reading as something you pick up and you do and and you can pull out a book in a matatu okay do that some people can't or won't and that's fine but i, I can pull out a book in a matatu and i will forget that i am the Noisy, Matatu, going to Rongai at a speed of God knows what, with the music of God knows what levels, singing God knows what, and I can get lost in a book that talks about a certain jungle, and I can go there and I'll be fine. So I would encourage you to read because it is good for your soul.
so thank you for watching please subscribe to the channel share like leave a comment tell a friend tell a friend tell a friend and then tell us about what you're reading how you're reading and things like that and maybe you buy books and tell us about them bye